men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. For this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. After this I will return, and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So in Israel you see, you see the Temple Mount, where the, where, the, where the big mosque is, and all those uh, Jews down at the wall, and they're all going like this. Actually, they're, they're like fornicating. It's what they're doing. It's, it's they're, they're under the law. And uh, that's not that's not the house the house of David, and that's not the temple. The Temple Mount is not the Temple Mount where where David's temple was. And I, and I thought about that a few weeks ago. First of all, we're looking in front of us, which most people believe is the Temple Mount. Yep. And why do they believe it's the Temple Mount? Because coming from the 13th century, when the Jews started coming back to Israel, there was up there where they call the Dome of the Rock. It was a church of the Crusaders at that time called the Temple of Domini. Okay. And because of that temple that was there, they said, well, if this is the Temple of Domini, this must have been the place where Solomon's temple was. And then, of course, later the Muslims took it back under Saladin and they made it back into the mosque again. Origi what are the historical records for the existence of the uh, church in place of the uh, Dome of the Rock today? Yes. Where, where do we find that? Uh, you can look from the Bordeaux Pilgrim and uh, Eusuvius, and there's different things that show that there was a church there, an actual an octagonal church that was called the Church of the Holy Wisdom and the Church of St. Cyrus. That they so you're, you're saying that the uh, size or the Dome of the Rock may have been the size of that church? Without a shadow of a doubt, because okay. it was an octagonal church and we actually have eight of them that they found here in Israel. Okay. We saw the one in Capernaum. We didn't get to see the one in Samaria. There's another one in the suburbs of Jerusalem uh, behind here. But at that time, that the Christians, because they believed the resurrection is the first day of the week, they started making the churches from the fifth, you know, fourth, fifth century all the way up until the sixth, seventh century. When the Muslims came in the Persian conquest, they destroyed the churches and made them into mosques. Sure. And then when the Crusaders came, they turned it back into a temple, so uh, to speak. And then when the Muslims came back, they turned it back into, and that's where you have the Dome of the Rock. And nowhere in the world will you ever find a mosque that's like that. Okay. You know, it just it isn't structured like and that. And really, it technically, is that a mosque? Uh, the, the Dome of the Rock? Yeah, it is a mosque. Okay. But I don't know if you'd say technically. Uh, from what I understand, there's not a quibla in there. Uh -huh. The quibla is the, the niche that kind of shows toward uh, Mecca. Okay. But they use it as a mosque. Because they you... always pray toward Mecca. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So the other thing that's very interesting is if we look at the dimensions of the harem, that's what they're calling it, the harem. So what, what, what's the meaning of harem? Right? Uh, it's like the holy place for the, the, the Muslims. They call it the okay. harem uh, as Sharif. So if you look at the, the dimensions of that, every Roman fort was 1,200 by 600 feet square or rectangular. This is almost exactly like that. It's 96% because of the formation of the rock. This is built on a 75 foot protruding rock that from the uh, city of David, when you come across the tunnels, which we're gonna do tomorrow, you'll actually see the base of that rock underneath here. So the rock comes up and that's why they built, they, they built it. And it's the size of every Roman fort. Now the temple, if you look at the size of the temple from now what fort was that called? Fort I, Antonia. Fort Antonia. And that's what Josephus tells us. Fort Antonia, which is also called the rock because of the large protruding rock that's underneath it. The interesting part is if you're looking at this as the temple, 
we have a lot of temple records, right? We have the temple scroll from the Dead Sea Scrolls. We have the Mishnah, we have the Talmud, we have the Bible, of course. So there's many, many records that talk about the temple, how it was built. And even in, 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 in the book of Kings, I mean, down to the cubic, there is absolutely no record of anything dealing with the temple with a large protruding rock. And just to show you how and large it is. The, the, the platform, uh, the Temple Mount, uh, as it's called today. Yes, and yes. the rock that's underneath the Dome of the Rock, where it actually comes out, it's protruding, which oh, okay. is 58 feet by 51 feet. So if that, if that dome was not there right now, that's what we would be, if we were standing there, you would be on a rock that's 58 feet by 51 feet. And that does not fit the size of the, the, the temple is what you're stating. No, the temple is, the Holy of Holies is 30 feet by 30 feet. And not only is that 58 by 51 feet, but it's it's an oblong rock. It's it's not it's flat. Not flat. Yeah, no, yeah. so there's no reason why you would have that rock in, in the Holy Holy. And there's nothing that ever says it. You know, that's the thing. If it was there, I mean, it's a pretty big rock. You would think some historical record would have mentioned it. Now, now what about the walls themselves? So what are some of the indicators that that's not the walls of the uh, temple? Well, these walls here we're looking at were built by Suleiman I in 1538. So these are all from the Ottoman Empire. Below these walls, though, and we can see a little bit over yeah, here, maybe the corner the, there. Exactly, yeah. the corner there, but mostly on the south side and the west side, there's about 10,000 Herodian stones, some of those stones up to eight tons, one stone, mm -hmm. that are still there today. So again, if we look in the Bible, Nehemiah 2, Nehemiah 3, Nehemiah 12, uh, the Bible tells us exactly about this wall being built, the wall of the temple at least anyway. And it tells us that when Nehemiah came, he came right through here, right through the Kidron Valley, right? And the stones were all there. He couldn't even get his donkey through. And he came up with this plan to rebuild the walls. Already Ezra had built the temple and he was going to rebuild the walls. And the Bible tells us the miracle that happened that 52 days with very few men, they built the walls. Now as we're looking at this wall, going all the way down, it's only uh, the eastern wall, even today, it would be impossible for crews with with uh, equipment, you know, with John Deere's to build this wall in 52 days. Yeah, it is quite a long wall. It's certainly the, uh, and considering, an thing. like it says in, in, in the New Testament, that it took the temple 46 years mm -hmm. to build, that you're not going to do that. But yet, in the city of David, where the temple would have been, uh, it would have been a magnificent feat, but they could have done it. They could have done the walls so, there. So you're saying the, the temple was not here, yes. right? Not, not in the traditional Temple Mount, but near the city of David. Exactly, in the city okay. of David. And remember, in the Bible, the Temple Mount, Mount Zion, which is Mount Zion, and the city of David are synonymous. You know, and we, uh, second and we see Chron examples of that. Second yeah. Chronicles 5 2, we see. And which is the city of David, which is Mount Zion. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, from a biblical standpoint, anybody would argue that Mount Zion and, and the city of David is the same. The problem that happened was because the Jewish people were out of here for a thousand years, they kind of lost the location of these places. Because God said, every stone shall be down. And all those stones are there in that wall, the, the Jews were all bopping their heads to. So that's not the Temple of David. So they're in the wrong place. And something really interesting is going to happen real soon. You guys will see it on television. And to agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and I will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof. And I will set it up. So God's coming to set up the new temple. The Jews say, oh, we're going to build the new temple. God's coming to do this. Jesus is coming to do this. Of course, this is after the war of Ezekiel and, the, and all hell breaks loose and the hailstones and everything are coming down. Verse 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. What did this just say? The residue of men. Do you know what residue is? When you're assaying, and 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 and, and you pour that mold in, in, into a, in, that that flux into a mold, that pot, and you have all the slag and everything comes up, and you break away the glass and you take out the lead button, there's a little bit of residue left in, in your mold. That's how many people are going to be left. There's going to be billions of people dead. That's why it's going to take them seven years to bury all the people, and this is coming soon. Now to get pure gold and silver, we must try, try it. As God promised, he'd try us with his words. 
He tries with his with his words. Okay, make sure you get a good grip of that before you pull it out. Okay. Okay, careful. Careful, it's very hot, 2,300 degrees. Okay. Firing silver in the earth kilns. We're going to fire them up to seven times. Make it pure. Okay, you're right over. Okay, keep that off. Yeah, don't touch it to the to the slag. Yeah, keep it up in the air. That's it. Now flip that thing over and get it to the back of the. Yeah, that's beautiful. Good job. I got stuck. Okay. I got stuck too. Okay, wait. There you go. There you. Go. So we need to be pure and tried. The other interesting thing is that in this verse, even though Abraham was very rich, you saw that he's very rich in silver and in gold and in cattle, he only tithed once from the spoils of war, not his wealth. This is coming soon. You better have the blood of Jesus Christ on your soul. <coughs> so the residue. The wounds thereof, I'll set it up. And the residue of men might seek after the Lord. That doesn't mean they all will. That doesn't mean they'll all believe. They might seek after. God's hoping they will. God's hoping they really woke up to all the things he did. And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Verse 18. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. So God clearly knew what he was doing, giving the gospel to the Gentiles. He did it from the beginning of the world when he first created the heavens and the earth. This was all part of the plan. Because he knew the Jews were going to be stiff-necked and not listen to him. Verse 19. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. So what the Jews, what Paul and everyone's saying here is we don't trouble these Gentiles that already turned to God. We're not to trouble them. But you go to Israel today and you, you take this book and you open it up to Isaiah 53 and start speaking the words, they're going to mob against you. They're going to attack you. They're going to trouble you. Because they don't understand this. They don't believe Paul and Paul was one of theirs. They don't, they don't believe you. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Really? Smitten by God. And afflicted. Sounds like somebody is prophesying the Lamb of God. I'm just reading from Isaiah. This is your scriptures. Isaiah is your scriptures. You don't like Isaiah? I'm just reading the book of Isaiah. What's wrong with Isaiah? This is the Hebrew Scriptures. This is the Hebrew Scriptures. What are you so mad about? Doesn't your rabbi read Isaiah? No, you stop. What's against the law? It's against the law. Get out of here. It's against the law. The next time the police is going to come. Get out of my face. No, 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 no. Get out of my face. It's against the law. Get out of here. Don't violate the law. Get out of here. Go away. It's against the law. Go away. It's against the law. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know the law. You don't know the law. You deserve it. <laughs> but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. We're not to eat blood. 
but that we write unto them, that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. But it's not a command. It was a command in the Old Testament. It's not a command, but we're being advised by, by, by the Jews here not to eat blood. So here James is saying that they are not going to trouble the Gentiles, but write to them to stay away from idols, adultery, adultery, which is what the Catholic Church does. They got, you know, Jesus's and Mary's and all that. You stay away from that stuff. Things strangled, don't eat an animal that's strangled. And drinking and eating blood. Don't drink blood and don't eat blood. That means uh, uh, blood war, all that stuff. You shouldn't eat blood. You shouldn't eat blood. But it's not a commandment. It's not a commandment, but you shouldn't do it. Because we're not under the law. <clears throat> now notice the blood. We're not to drink or eat blood today because it will cause us to do other things that God doesn't want us to do. That's why. And God's just warning us here, don't do it. That's why the Jews kosher their meat. You ever hear, you ever go in a store and you see kosher stuff from the Jews? And Muslims, they halal. That's why they halal it. it. They drain the blood out. They know they're not supposed to eat blood. The Muslims are very wise to these old laws. They know they're not supposed to eat blood, but that's under the law, and the Muslims put themselves under the law. Making it blood free, and then praying over it. So verse 21, For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. The Sabbath is a Saturday. The synagogue, for the most part, is a Jewish building. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. But the churches today believe it in our synagogues too. It's a place where you go and talk about God. A synagogue. So what's, what's being read here in the synagogues? Moses, they're preaching Moses, Moses. The Jews hold Moses so high, so elevated. That's why I say when the two witnesses come, it's not Enoch and Elijah, it's Moses and Elijah. Because when they were making that film, The Ten Commandments over in, in, uh, in, the, in the Middle East, most, mostly in Israel, a lot of it was done and by the Red Sea. When they were making that, the, the Jews would say, Moses, Moses, when they actually saw the, the actor, Charlton Heston dressed as Moses, Moses, Moses. sinned a great sin in the sight of God. You are not worthy to receive these Ten Commandments. Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. live by the law shall die by the law they have a very high reverence for Moses it's taught in their synagogue every week Moses they have a high degree Moses will be one of the two witnesses absolutely and Moses turned the blood to water and the blood's going to be turned to the water the rain's going to be shut off for three and a half years Elijah shut the rain off all this stuff's coming to a city near you soon so the Jews preach Moses in the synagogues, which is another clue who one of the witnesses would be. <coughs> now, verse 22. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Jewish, Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. 
And they wrote letters to them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren, send greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. So they're sending greetings to the brothers in Christ, the brethren, the Gentiles, the Jews are sending greetings to them. So they're really high, highly, they knew that we were saved. Well, not we, not us, but Gentiles back then were saved and they weren't yet, except Paul. Paul got the instruction right from Jesus. So Paul starts in Antioch, where the Gentiles are the people getting saved there. Paul was from Tarsus, a Gentile city. That's where Paul was from, a place called Tarsus. And previously taught in Gentile cities, getting the heathen saved full of zeal. So, so there's Gentiles just like today, you know, if you get full of zeal. You can lace it for me, sure. This evening they will be. One more book of you too. Hey, Kusu, you can't take it off. Hey, 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 More book for you, okay, I should be. <coughs> when, you, when you know Jesus Christ, you want to tell other people about him one way or another, you get full of zeal. Espanol? Por favor. And uh, uh, you want one too? Okay. Okay. Back then there were two. And if you want to see where that happens, that's over in the book. Keep your finger in the Acts 15. Go over to Galatians again. Galatians 1. Galatians 1. Galatians 1. Verse 15. But when it pleased God, 115, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son. Did you wait? Did you guys see that? But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. So he called him while he's still in the womb. You see that? So a, a, a baby is a real living soul, spirit, being in the womb. Which is one of the reasons that we don't have any appreciation of abortion. To reveal his son unto me, reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with the flesh, not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which are apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, so three years Paul's in Arabia. What's he doing in Arabia? The only place in Arabia is Mount Sinai. And that's where God came down to Moses. He went up there with Jesus Christ on the mount. He is personally taught by Jesus Christ for three years, which is why he's the apostle of the Gentiles today. That's what Jesus was teaching them. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But the other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. So we're, James, we're talking about James here. We're talking about the brother of Jesus Christ, the half-brother. Now the things which I write to you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came unto the regions of Syria and Cilicia. And then we go back to Acts 15, 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which sent out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So people back then were these Jewish roots people today that say, don't eat 
shrimp, don't eat lobster, don't do this, don't do that. Put you under the law. So there's people back then doing it just like today. Now Paul and Peter just said a few verses back that the Gentiles are not to be troubled. And here they're saying they're going to go and trouble the Gentiles to put them under the law. So these people were around back then and we call it the Jewish Roots Movement today. Almost like we're going back in time with these new movements. Jesus identified these new movements back in the book of John. If you keep your finger in Acts and go to 1 John uh, uh, 2. Actually, that's by the end of the, just before Revelation, the end of the Bible. 1 John 2. For Jesus identified these guys. Verse 18. Uh, so, uh, yeah, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Verse 19, they went out from us. See? So, so these people that are Antichrist now came out from us. So they were people in church buildings. Yeah. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. So you know they're not of. You know they're not of God anymore. Verse 20, But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. This is the Holy One, right here. The Word, pure, perfect, preserved Word of God. Jesus Christ on earth till He returns. This is the Holy One. We have the Holy One. We have it. Those church buildings don't. Well, very few and far between. I haven't found one in Petamedibo yet. So you'll know all things. You believe and read this book, you will know all things. You will know all things. And the Antichrist puts you under the law. Acts 15. Back to Acts 15, verse 25. It seemed good to us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you, with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So back then, just like today, in many countries, men are hazarding their life just to speak, just to give out a gospel tract. <coughs> Here, sir, I give gospel tracts to everyone. They don't put me in jail. They don't put me in prison. They don't hang me at Fort Salendia. In other countries, they will, including China, Muslim countries. They'll kill you for that. They'll persecute for you for that, or for speaking the words of Jesus Christ. You'd be incarcerated for preaching God's word. You go to you go to prison in China. Now, verse 27, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Verse 28, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. The Holy Ghost was with them, just like he's with us today. But he was with them, teaching them to write the words. We've got his words today. 
We've got him right here. When this book's open, the Holy Ghost is with us. <coughs> of course, the words were being written back then and, and, and spoken. <laughs> Today, he doesn't speak to us. Anyone that tells you, oh, God spoke to me and told me to tell you, they're a liar. This is how God speaks to us. Reread his word. And if you want to hear God speak, read it out loud. If you read it all by yourself, read it out loud. You'll hear God speak. This is how God speaks to us today. His word's complete. Verse 29. That ye abstain from meats offered to idols. So you should abstain from meats offered to idols. And the problem is, we don't know. You go to a restaurant, you don't know if that meat you're eating is offered to an idol, do you? And you're supposed to abstain to that? So that's why it's not a commandment. That's why it's advice. So what we do is when we get meat or something in a restaurant, we get a meal in a restaurant, you pray over your food. Even if it, you don't make, have to make a big scene and do it in public, just pray over that food. Say, God, please bless this food. If it's, and it's been sacrificed to any idols, just bless it to the use of my body. You pray for it. And from blood, and from things strangled, and from fornication, for which if you keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. So you're going to do really good in life if you stay away from fornication, which is premarital sex. You've got to stay away from that. And from idols and from blood and things strangled. So it's very good advice for us here today. So you want to do a, 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 well as a believer? Stay away from these things. Now, what is it, the scriptural definition of these things? It's all adultery. You think just because you go to a Catholic church and you see a statue of Mary and Jesus and stuff, that's adultery? No, these things are adultery. And I'm going to show you that in the scripture today. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Keep your finger in Acts. We'll be going back there. 1 Samuel 15, 23. 1 Samuel 15... 23. <clears throat> oh. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So you don't rebel. You don't rebel against this book, the truth. And don't rebel against, uh, yeah. <clears throat> and stubbornness. So for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Look at that. So rebellion, stubbornness is iniquity and adultery. Adultery. Idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. God said we're going to be kings and priests. Even women are going to be kings and priests in his kingdom. If you reject his words, if these are the pure, perfect, preserved words of God, like I tell you guys every week they are, and you reject this book, and you just kind of push it aside when it's trying to speak to you, he reject thee from being a king. You see? You don't, want, you don't want that to happen. Now, I'm going to take a peek over in Colossians 3. Zip over to Colossians 3. Colossians. That's in the new, beginning in the New Testament almost. Well, not beginning, thir page 1300, Colossians. Right after Philippians, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 5. Is mortify therefore your members. What are your members? Your hands, your feet, parts of your body. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is adultery. What is covetous? That's what they're teaching you in the churches today. The covet. Well, give your tithes, 
God's going to bless you. God wants you to show off as a Christian. Have a nice car. Have a nice house. He wants you to show off. God wants to show off with us. I repeat. God wants to show off with us. So other people will be drawn to you. No, God never once said that. That's covetousness. That's what the churches are teaching you today. And that's why we left the churches. Acts 15.30. Let's finish off this Acts. We're almost done. So when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch. And when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. In other words, they, they put it into scripture. All the things that were being said, they, they, they wrote it and delivered it to the Gentiles. So there was a multitude of Gentiles that understood they were no longer under the law. They were listening and learning from Paul. So back then they could understand why they weren't under the law anymore and they were so full of joy over it. Today all these Jewish roots movement people are trying to put you under the law. So we've got to see through these guys. <clears throat> Verse 31. Which when they had read, they rejoiced for consolation. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Told them, wow, you guys understand. Now you're saved. Great. So they're being confirmed. They were right in Paul's teaching and ministry. <clears throat> Verse 33. And after they had tarried there a space. Uh, space means time. They, they were there for a little bit of time. That could have been days, weeks, or even months. They were let go in peace from their brethren unto the apostles. Notwithstanding, it pleased Silas to abide their steel. Look at that Verse 34. Underline it. Notwithstanding it, please Silas to abide there still. <coughs> Why are you going to underline it? All false Bibles take this verse out. It's gone. Why? They don't want you to know that Silas stayed there. There's a very special reason for that. <coughs> Verse 34 has been taken out of most new Bible versions or it's been corrupted. New Bibles say Silas continued on. Why don't they want you to know they stayed, that he stayed? People were rejoicing over him. That's why they were rejoicing over him that they were no longer under the law. So all the Jewish roots movements, they take it out too. They don't want you to know that Silas stayed. The people just loved this guy because they weren't under the bondage. They weren't in the yoke of bondage anymore under the law. Like Paul, he was a Jew, Silas was a Jew, and a Roman citizen. So verse 35, Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let's, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord, and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. So this guy didn't actually come and help him do the work of God, so Paul didn't want him to come along. Basically, that's what that's saying. Verse 39, And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. They got so contending about this, they left each other. They left each other. <coughs> <coughs> And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. So a contention with Barnabas over a man split these guys up, split them up. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. 
So Father God, thank you for this teaching today. I know there's a lot of good stuff in here and I know a lot of it's for me and, and the listeners out there. And, and if it touched anyone out there, just, just you know, let them hide, hide your words in their heart. And anyone uh, out there that sees this message later, just uh, bless them in all truth, Father God. And uh, let us have a safe day today and a fun day today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire.